Hi everyone, it's Justin. There's one question that defines your entire style. This question also influences how designers design. The question is, who you dress for when you get up in the morning? Let me explain. If you're a woman, for example, are you dressing just for yourself? Or are you dressing for other women? Or are you dressing for men? And if you're a man, are you dressing to impress men, to impress women? Or you think you dress just to satisfy your own standards and you do it really just for you. At this stage, you might want to reply that you don't care about the way other people look at you, that you dress to satisfy your own taste, your own mood, yourself, and that's it. If you think that, take three seconds now to write it down in the comments below. Now, here's my opinion. I think barely anyone gets dressed for himself or for herself. You're always dressing to impress or seduce others or even to tell them I don't care about the way you look at me but in doing that you're still talking to other people. Proof point. If you spent a whole week alone in a house in a completely lonely place and you knew nobody would look at you, how would your style look on day seven? In my case, as far as I'm concerned, I'd be really honest with you, I'd be wearing pyjamas and certainly no makeup. You can call it peer pressure or society pressure, but I mean, it's, it's true. We have to admit that if there's really nobody in the room to judge us, we'd be much more casual and go for comfortable stuff instead of thinking about what goes together and how to highlight our silhouette. Now, here's the thing. Brands and clothing brands play with that learning all the time. Example, Victoria's Secret. Right? They tell you it's for a strong woman who knows what she wants, who's self-confident. Seriously? I mean, they're obviously playing with a woman who wants to seduce a man. The underwear is not comfortable, the fit is ridiculously tight. Who would wear that to sit on a couch and watch TV? Here is a little game to support my point. You see here four options. Rank them in the order that women prefer to wear to sleep. So you rank the options from the preferred one to the least like one to wear to go to bed. You have three seconds. Here is the solution. It was a survey conducted in France, but yeah, women wouldn't generally wear sexy underwear to go to bed. It's just not comfortable, gentlemen, I'm sorry. There are plenty of examples of other brands using the exact same strategy. So Diane von Furstenberg, who lives in New York, and her wrap dress. Christian Dior and his new look style with padding all around. Balmain's Warrior Girls with bones and structure everywhere. It's not really comfortable to move, is it? Tom Ford suits, if you're talking for men. They are all designed and conceived to impress the desired gender after all. Okay, and once you know that, you understand better how designers actually work. If I'm designing for a woman who dresses to impress other women, then I need angles, broad shoulders, strong shapes, hard fabrics. If I'm designing for a woman who wants to seduce men, then I need a completely different thing. Then I need to pay attention to what men like a lot more. I'm taking cliches here, but just to give you an idea, skirts should be shorter, you should have cleavages, naked backs, the like it, fluid silhouette where you can guess where the body is underneath, things like that. Now comes a question to you guys. Do you know one designer for women or for men, doesn't matter, who really designs for an audience who dresses for herself? If you do know one name, write it down in the comments below because I couldn't find any. Do you know who I design for? The woman in my mind is dressing for other women. She's telling them, I'm not competing with you. I'm not even part of the competition. When I enter a room, I just shine so much from the inside out that I win all the hearts. So there might indeed not be that many women who actually think that way, but there are many women who wish they had this self-confidence and aspire to reach that stage. And fashion is about aspiration and inspiration. So it's good to have a little bit of dream 
a little slice of projection into a wish future because it's what makes fashion different from a 50 cent piece of cloth. If this video got you thinking, give it a thumb up. Thank you so much. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel to get notified about future videos. I upload one new video every Sunday at least. Here are two things to watch next. The first one, how to start your fashion line based on my own experience. And the second one, trends coming this fall winter. And thank you so much to you guys because this video already reached a thousand views in two weeks. Thank you. Keep creating. Take care. See you next week. Bye-bye.